Hey guys, Stephen McAdee here from Perfect Balance Clinic and this is the fabulous I'm Dr. Daniel Gordon. So Dr. Daniel Gordon has joined me here today to talk a little bit about um, when to um, run and get an MRI scan. So a lot of you out there will probably be looking around and trying to work out um, and probably be thinking I need to get an MRI scan on this, but that isn't the case, is it? No, absolutely not, you're right. So just because you have pain somewhere doesn't mean you need to have a picture of it. Okay? Yeah. And I think that's kind of a crucial point. The majority of back pain will get better on its own. I think that's the first thing to say. The other thing is that what you, the level of pain you have doesn't necessarily correlate with what's going on inside. Okay. The other important thing I always say to patients is if you're going to do a scan on someone, you should only really do it if it's going to change your management in yeah, some way. Absolutely. So if you're thinking you've got lower back, which may be due to a slight um, slip disc or something like that, then you could do an MRI to find out that information. But if the result is you're just going to send the person to see a physiotherapist or a therapist of some kind, yeah. then actually there may be a more sensible option, such as actually trying all of that first and then scanning if things don't get better. Absolutely. Time. Absolutely. And that, that's exactly the same approach that we take in clinic as well. Um, now that there's uh, much more easily accessible MRI scans and x-rays, there's uh, a growing trend of therapists, to, um, of patients to pop in to see their therapist, local physiotherapist, osteopath, and chiropractor even, and be sent for x-rays or MRI scans. And that um, often will lead to more harm than good because there's, I mean, I mean I've, I've um, done a master's in neuroscience myself, and one of the modules that we had was actually where we took part in other people's um, MRI studies. So I had the, I was fortunate enough to have several MRI scans on my neck and I found that actually there were some small signs of disc prolapses in my neck. Um, and I've ha not had a single symptom for my neck up until then. Um, but all of a sudden when you know something's there, it suddenly starts to play on your mind a little bit, doesn't it? So Absolutely, and there's, you know, the, the cycle of pain and how pain works is incredible incredibly complicated as you yeah. must have learned in yeah. masters yeah. but um, the moment you're aware of it it becomes something that you can fear and that can become painful for you even if it wasn't before yeah. so there are definitely situations where you would want to scan someone's back and you would want to know what was going on but just because you have pain it doesn't mean you need to scan absolutely so it's, it's really important that you see um, an educated practitioner who's able to work out clinically um, when is a good time to scan so when would you say is a good time to start to scan people um, it's a, that's a good question. I think it's very much dependent on the person. Generally, if you're dealing with musculoskeletal back pain with no red flags, and we've got another video out there about red flags and back pain, yeah, so yeah. symptoms that I would worry about. So if there's none of that, then I would say I would probably only scan if the person hasn't responded to a course of treatment with a therapist, usually around six weeks or so. The other reason I would scan is if they had very strong neurological symptoms, so if they had very severe sciatica down one leg and I was really... Um, it's very suspicious that, that one of their nerves would be compressed by a slip disc. I think I would be more keen to scan them quickly there. Yeah, so th there's been um, episodes um, in, in my clinical practice um, over the years where I've um, decided to not scan people. Um, and the reason for that is that um, not everyone that comes into the door with back pain or leg pain needs to have a scan. Now, um, that really takes a very confident practitioner or a very um, skillful practitioner to be able to work out when the best time of scanning someone is. But it's um, something that I don't rely on as a single um, definitive um, diagnosis as to what's causing that person's back pain because what I've learned over the years is actually what you see on an MRI scan isn't necessarily what the client's symptoms will be presenting like. So I was just talking to Dr. Daniel Gordon today about um, a, a particular patient I have in mind. I won't mention his name, but he, he knows who he is because he, he used to ride horses a lot and he'd always complain about this slight uh, ache in his lower back and he'd um, been seeing many osteopaths and physiotherapists in the past and he hadn't had any scans on his back but um, what was quite interesting is that his back pain responded pretty well to treatment it went away um, but then uh, five or six weeks later he did something else to his back and we decided at that point to scan his back and um, what was interesting is that for someone who had very mild symptoms he had quite substantial problems in his back um, of which he, he, we decided to refer him to an orthopaedic consultant um, who also decided that actually because his symptoms were so minor and they responded that we just wait and see and watch what happens and often the, the scan can then be used as a way of just um, managing or, or being able to um, uh, look at what's going on with the back but make a clinical decision based on what you find plus how the patient's responding to treatment as well. So one of the things that you mentioned was that 
if someone isn't responding to treatment, so after a period of treatment for five or six weeks and there's no response whatsoever to treatment, um, then you'd be looking at um, possibly getting some imaging or some further investigation. Absolutely, yeah, I agree, especially with back pain because you know, around the six week mark with muscular skeletal back pain, I would expect to see some kind of improvement. Yeah. If there was nothing at all, then I would be thinking, does this need to be escalated to a surgeon to, you know, for, for, for more complicated pain management strategies such as injections and even surgery if that was um, kind of in a more serious situation? But that's when I would use an MRI scan to kind of actually start figuring out what's the damage here, what's actually happened in this patient's back, yeah. um, and what pathway am I going to put them on at this point? Yeah, so um, Dr. Daniel Gordon, are there key things that you'd be looking out for in clinics? Like, what would be your top three reasons why you'd scan somebody? So, I think we've touched on most of them already. So, the first one would be um, a poor response to treatment. Yeah. Um, I think the second one would be a severe, a really severe initial presentation. So, a young person um, with, um, for example, like a young, young fit person with really, really severe back pain. Um, and the third one would be if they had very strong neurology in one of their legs, so you had severe sciatica in one leg, and, and I was really suspicious that there was some, uh, that something in the back was pushing or compressing the nerve. Yeah, so um, severe sciatica would not just be the type of sciatica that you get when there's a little bit of pressure on the back of your leg if you've been sat on the toilet for a little bit, but um, it would be more this kind of um, severe sciatica that comes along with a lot of power or loss of tone, muscle tone in the leg, a loss of sensation, so you've got persistent numbness or persistent pins and needles down the leg, which can be a severe sign of nerve irritation or compression. So it's, um, these symptoms are in association with these things, and that's where um, Google won't be able to help you so much when you're searching for the answers for this, because it really did, um, is related to experience. So it's something you and I have learned over experience, that, and obviously we learned a lot when we studied initially, but it's not until you start to see these features uh, together that you use your clinical judgment to be able to work out when the best time to be referring to someone or the best treatment to be able to uh, put them through. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a, that's a great point. It's about clinical judgment for each case. There's no one case of back pain that's the same. We've got red flags, we've got certain rules, but you don't hold those rules to everyone. And it's very much dependent on the patient. So you need to see a practitioner who can really examine you and take your story properly and then make, an, make a really educated decision based on their own experience on whether you need a scan or whether you need to go straight to a, kind of a therapist or a practitioner first. Yeah. So hopefully that's been really helpful. But if you'd like some more information from a very experienced practitioner like Mr. Daniel Gordon, then he's kindly um, allowed us to put his information down here and you're able to speak to people, aren't you? Yeah, just use the contact details there on the screen. Brilliant. And if you do have any other questions or you'd like to more engage more online about your condition or you just want to ask some questions and need some more information, then just leave your details in the box below here and we'll be able to get back to you as soon as possible and take some more details from you about your problems and hopefully put you in the right direction, uh, whether it's to coming in to see one of the practitioners at the clinic um, going off to see your, your GP or someone like Mr. Daniel Gordon um, and working with people to get results for your healthcare. And that's what we're all about. And the nature of these videos is not to sell you anything. It's really just to point you in the right direction so that the information you're getting on Google can be interpreted properly by a specialist like Dan, Dr. Daniel Gordon um, who can give you the information to piece everything together and get your results as quickly as possible. But for now, it's bye-bye from me. And bye from me. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.